Since 1947, the World Affairs Council has become the preeminent global stage for world leaders and the public to inform, engage, and debate the most important issues of our time. It's your world. Get to know it. My own archive, for example, on which the book was based, contains over 175 primary source documents, numbering over 840 pages. This is a significant amount of material, and yet the only reasonable claim that I can make about my own archive is that I hold only the documents I found to date, and surely not all that exist. Given this body of primary sources, it is odd that so few of them have been exploited by Western political leaders, writers, and analysts who have spoken on the bin Laden issue or produced books meant to explain who bin Laden is and what he is up to. To date, works on bin Laden, with a few notable exceptions, especially Peter Bergen's splendid book, The Osama Bin Laden I Know, have been based in the main on what other individuals have said about him and not what he has himself said and done. These other commentators can be divided into two batches. The first tend to be such enemies of bin Laden and al-Qaeda as the former Saudi intelligence chief, Prince Turkey, the imprisoned but now supposedly reformed Islamist scholar, a man named Dr. Fadl, and the former is Islamist and anti-Saudi firebrand, Sheikh al Auda, who now runs a website and a television channel for the Saudis. The second batch is found among former or current Mujahideen who have fallen out with bin Laden for one reason or another. It must be said that leading Muslim journalists and writers have paid much closer attention to bin Laden's words and especially his knowledge of and use of Islamic history and by and large have produced more sophisticated and accurate portraits of him. Six, nine, since 9-11 then, a score or more books have been written by Western and Muslim authors about bin Laden and al-Qaeda. In regard to bin Laden, these books have focused on his character, his intelligence, leadership talent, public speaking ability, international influence, and organization and modern management style. I believe that the best of the books were written by Peter Bergen and Steve Cole. Among the rest, there are a dozen or so books by Western and non-Muslim authors that have come to be categorized as essential works on bin Laden and al-Qaeda. In my new book, I have exa examined each of these books closely and noted the number of citations of primary documents, speeches, interviews, sermons, statements, and so on, that are contained in the author's footnotes. I have also noted where a large number of citations pertain to relatively, relatively few primary documents. I did not, of course, have access to electronic versions of the books. My count is derived from a line-by-line -line reading of each book's endnotes. Keeping scores, I went. I do not claim that the accounts are exact, but they are quite close, and give a clear idea of the degree to which each author exploited primary sources. Indeed, there seems to be an, uns an unshakable presumption that secularism will eventually triumph around the world, and that only material gain, class interests, or other non-religious factors can be deemed to be real sources of motivation. In this worldview, Religion is merely a cover for more measurable political, economic, and social motivations. These same individuals seem even more reluctant to face, or to at least publicly state, the fact that in the eyes of most Muslims around the world, Western policies and actions in the Islamic world are not benign and humanitarian, but are viewed as anti-Muslim and lethal. The bulk of bin Laden scholarship, moreover, is extraordinarily presentist. When Western authors encounter thinking or mores they consider anachronistic in the modern world, they default to asserting that ideas running counter to the tenets of secularism, multiculturalism, globalization, and diversity can only be held by limited numbers of medieval, violence-prone, pseudo-Islamic thugs. The predominantly secular authors, for example, hate the absence of women's rights in much of the Muslim world, and so Islamists are always arch-misogynists. The writers also hate the motivational power of Islam across, Mus across the Muslim world, a power that indeed advises violence can be necessary to defend the faith. And so the Islamists are described as distorters of their religion. Most of all, 
The writers fear any threat to progress, and so, notwithstanding the heart on the sleeve prose used by many authors, they preferred to combat the Islamists in several rather stark ways. <laughs> 